Hey everybody, it's Maria. Welcome back to my channel. I have to say, thank goodness we recycle cardboard and a lot of other things around here because look at this gigantic box. I, I, I guess there's no other safer way to transport some of these larger instruments. So I, what can I say? Um, hopefully the instrument will be safe after all this, you know, lots of cardboard, let's just say it's a big box. <laughs> so let me uh, open it up really quickly so we can get it out and recycled. Um, so my husband doesn't have a Harry. <laughs> and I'll uh, see what it is. I'll tell you that the kind folks at Van Goa, hint, hint, sent this to me because they really liked the mini banjo um, unboxing and demo and stuff that I did uh, about a week or two ago. So that's your hint. So let me open it up and um, I'll fast forward through this, not to bore you, and we'll see what we have. There's Gracie! <laughs> it's me, Gracie. I just did that. Don't bark. All right. So can you see it? Am I in the frame? It's another banjo, but I think it's a full-size one. Feels like it. Ah! I have to go back to work tonight. Whew. All right, Gracie's like, what is it? By the way, my thumb, my trigger thumb is healing, but now I have a lot of tissue here that has to be worked on with some scar cream, but at least I can use it again. I'm glad to see they've definitely improved their case. It's another nice uh, thickly padded case similar to the mini size banjo with another nice little red goodie bag. I'll leave that out. Okay. It's really warm out here for uh, mid-September. Okay. Nice gig bag with backpack straps, just like the other one. It's literally identical. It's just a bigger version, it looks like. Okay, so we have a nice handle that's got a little padding on it. And we have a zippered pouch. We'll do the goodie bag after. <laughs> Gracie, shh. Got the Van Gogh logo with the um, F clef. Normally people use a G clef, so they're using the F clef, which is the bass clef. That's, that's cool and different. Again, I like the way it opens up, totally flat, makes it easier to place the banjo in and out. Sometimes that's so hard when it's a banjo or ukulele or guitar to kind of squeeze it in. So you open it like that, good to go. The bridge is, again, just like the other one, I'll have to place the bridge on here. It does not come with the bridge in place. Okay, so we'll just put this aside. Right, Gracie? You want a kiss? You want mommy kiss? She's such a good girl. Alrighty. And then we will open up the banjo. I'm excited. I have no idea what this one looks like. <laughs> I didn't know what the other one looked like either. I like to be surprised. The little rubber bands are very dangerous for Gracie because she does still put everything in her mouth. Okay. Look at that, another looks like a maple neck. Again, just like the other one, I will definitely put all the specs on the screen after I edit the video. Okay, this, this head is a little different. The other one had that um, uh, look where it was almost like two colors. Uh, it was like a grayish white. This is a more of a cream colored head that I can see. Very clean lines. Look at that. Beautiful perloid um, tuning pegs on the four strings and on the drone. I've also been taught something by a viewer. That's why I'm so happy with all the YouTube people um, who view my uh, videos because sometimes they give me really good critical feedback, which is important to get better. 
and I was trying to intonate the, the top string here, this fifth string, and I figured, oh, I have to go to the 17th fret to get the halfway mark. And he said, you don't intonate the drone. And I just realized that now, you never fret the drone. It's always an open string. So as long as you get it in tune, it's fine. So that's good to know. You only need to intonate four strings, the other four. So let's get this out of the way. Let me get up close so you can see it. It's a full-size banjo. And this time it does not have a resonator or a back of any sort. Okay. Um, it's got beautiful, beautiful wood around the rim and the neck. The workmanship is really outstanding. And I could feel that there are no um, sharp frets. Very smooth, even with this, I could feel it. This is what's called the um, coordinator rod I've been taught. See this rod right here is the coordinator rod. And the truss rod goes all the ways up and you adjust it with this piece here. You take this piece off here and there's an Allen wrench and you can um, adjust the neck if it's bowed at all. And you can tighten the uh, head with another type of wrench on and these little things are adjustable here. And this one actually comes with a built-in strap button holder, which the other one didn't have. That's kind of cool. And also on the other side too, that's awesome. The other one, I just put it on one of the, the mini one, I just put it on one of those things. But here you could put it right in its proper place. That's great. And this is adjustable as well. I don't know a lot about banjos, so if I was going to adjust anything more than the intonation, I would probably bring it to some of the local shops that I've come to know in the last couple of years. And they could, you know, check it out. Actually, there's a guy that I brought a tenor banjo to, Mo, Mo's Guitars in Hawthorne. Really nice guy, and he was able to um, put, put strings on the old tenor banjo and make it an Irish tenor. So that was very cool. So, let's open this up. My dog is looking to see what can she get into. Not that, uh-uh-uh, it's not a bully. No, 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 okay, good girl. All right, so this one has the, and this one has it, under so they were able to make it work so that you could place it under so i'm not even going to take it off because this is where you want to put the bridge you put this as i mentioned on the other video if you didn't see it please check it out it says zero fret again there is there, there's no zero fret here this is just i don't know what they mean by that maybe they just think that this is fret one and so that's a zero but a uh, zero fret is a whole other ball game um but this one this plastic this, this little arrow goes to the end of the nut. This is your nut, okay? And then it goes all the ways to where, it stops obviously, and that's where you place the bridge. So they really make it easy for you. And if you didn't have this, you would just measure with a, a, ruling, a ruler or a measuring tape. And you just want it to be equal distant, equidistant. Okay, so I'm gonna place the bridge and I'll tune this beautiful banjo up. I don't know if it's, oh, it is a Remo head. Look at that, I wasn't sure if it was, but it says it under there. Remo head, this is awesome. They make drum heads, as I said, my son's a drummer, so I know all about that. And these are the really pretty filigree for the dots for your fret markers. Beautiful, beautiful open back banjo. An open back banjo is a little lighter, obviously. It doesn't have the resonator. And also I was taught something else by a viewer, it might have been the same viewer or a different one, I'm not sure, but I was taught that the other one, the smaller banjo, if you look it up, I'll maybe put a link here somewhere, um, had a big resonator, but I thought it was the tone ring because that's what they wrote on the information, but actually that is not correct. I'll have to, I think I let them know that already, that the tone ring is a metal ring that goes around 
here somewhere. So it's not a tone ring on the other one. It was just an extra big resonator with this bottom, which made it look really fancy. And I have to say, I don't know if it was because of that and the extra wood involved, but it had a very warm tone, which I thought was lovely. So check that video out if you can. I plan on using that little banjo to learn on as well because it's so much fun to play. I was playing it yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna place the bridge. What the, oh, I thought I, oh, I almost had a heart attack. I thought Gracie got a hold of the bridge and this would be literally nothing. It would be spindles. It'd be in her tummy. She's so quick. Let me check on her. She's okay. Now to place the bridge, you have to loosen all the strings because you don't wanna pop them when you flip this over. Yeah, I'm gonna place it where it's bent a little this way because I feel that the action will be better. If you wanna write in the comments if that's correct or not, let me know, I could always flip it. So let me loosen these up. Make sure you, t you turn the right way or you'll pop the string. You'll hear it going down in pitch. <laughs> if you're not paying attention, I've done that. I'm going to place the bridge this way. You're going to slip it under the strings. And then you're going to slip the strings in the notches. Okay, there are notches for each string. This last string here, the um, drone is a little bent on this ukulele. Hopefully it won't snap on me. I hope not. I mean, on this banjo. I play ukulele too, as you know, maybe. Maybe no. Okay, here we go. put it exactly where it shows, but then we will have to adjust it after we tune it and keep trying to intonate it. And I'll show you how to do that after. So the bridge is placed and probably could go a little, a little further up, but I can't because the plastic's there. So we're gonna leave it there and we will try to intonate it. We may have to make it a little crooked. It depends. All right, so let's do that now. Okay. Now I could take this plastic. Ah! It flipped over! Ah! That could happen. This is real life, folks. So now I'm just going to place it on it and get it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not a science. Not an exact science, anyway. Oh, I hate when that happens. It scares me. Okay, I'm jumpy these days <laughs> since COVID began. All right, there you go. So it's pretty much aligned. All right, I'm going to put this back in the bag so Gracie doesn't get to it. And I'm going to look in the goodie bag because I'm sure there's a tuner. I'm hoping. Pretty confident. And here we are. Tuner. I'll go through the goodie bag after I tune this baby up because just in case it's going to rain, I could bring it inside before I get all involved. In case you don't think there's a battery in it, I did that once thinking they didn't include the battery. Any number of companies, I don't know which one it was, but they put it in the clip, a lot of them. So you just unclip it and there's the battery that you need to make the tuner work. I just put it always on C for chromatic. Now this banjo will be tuned the way all bluegrass, NG, uh, full 
scale banjos are tuned. The other one was the exact tuning, but up like five frets, as if you slapped a capo on a guitar and started with that pitch. Because a ukulele is um, taking a guitar, putting a capo on the fifth fret, and you have the strings of ukulele with all six if you had a guitar. If it was like a six string ukulele, which is also, also called a gitzalele, but that's something else. So now you would tune this in G. And, and I believe it should even tell you in this little book, well, let me see if the strings are correct this time. No, I don't, these are probably the correct strings, but they have the wrong names on the back. And the reason I say that is my, the representative that sent me the Van Gogh mini banjo, when I told her it, they were wrong, she said, oh, they just put the wrong letter name. You will have to find that out for yourself when you change the strings. Keep these strings or, they have something where you could check the gauge if you want, or just have this as a spare and just buy a, a banjo strings. That's probably what I would do because I just don't know. And I hate changing strings, so I don't want to change them all and, and have them pop or be the wrong ones. Anyway, let's look in the book and see if it tells us the banjo tuning. By the way, the book shows you how to place the bridge and about the truss rod. So they have G, D, G, B, D. I believe that is correct. So you would have this drone is a G, hence the name uh, bluegrass tuning in G. And then the next string would be D, the next string after that G again, the next string B and the next string G. And the reason it's called in G is the, all those strings together, those pitches form a G chord. So it's an open G chord. That's the cool part. Okay, so you have your first chord when you just strum it. All right, I'm going to um, close the video because I just want to look on my phone and see if that is correct because I don't want to tune it and have it be wrong. I'll let you know when I put the video back on. Okay, I have to say, this is one of the easiest banjos I've ever had to tune right off the bat with new strings. It will take time for them to stay in tune, but they got in tune very quickly. And the cool part is, I didn't have to do anything to the bridge. Where you saw me place it is perfectly intonated. Here's the 12th fret, and here's the, uh, the D. I don't know if you could see, it's green on my, uh, on here, but it's green here. It's amazing probably can't see it but you have to trust me there look let's try it see it's green and then it's green pretty amazing the only thing is there's and there's something in the book about how to correct the buzz I don't know if it's a buzz but there's like a wow there's definitely something and it might need to the, the head might need to probably needs to be tightened and I probably could try that with the um, tool that they give us because that's the only string it sounds kind of funny you hear that that one wow almost like a sitar yeah that definitely has to be fixed so the other ones are correct and they're placed correctly in here and because everything seems to be intonated so well I don't think it has to do with the bridge leaning towards this way I don't know if you could see that so if you're a viewer and it's incorrect please let me know and uh, I will try to adjust it um, when I do another video I'll have it fixed and play a song with it correctly but I was told by another viewer that when it sounds like a sitar like, like that, it might have to do with the drum head needing to be tightened. Um, there are different things that you can use. This is an armrest, by the way. It's got plastic on it, but it's an armrest. So I might try to tighten the strings after this video. So it doesn't twang when I play it. That's just strummed open. probably the maple does that oh, so this is just the actual tab without any rolls
bothering me, so um, I really want to fix that. So I think I'm going to look in here for the correct tool. I hope that's all that's, this is. Because I am, as I said, not a luthier. But let's look at, you have plastic picks, you have a cleaning cloth, the tuner, you have a stick-on pickup if you want to record with it. It's a stick-on so that you, it's not a microphone, so it shouldn't pick up your voice, it should just pick up the instrument. It's got a black strap, very nice, plain black, I like that. And it has, here we go, <clears throat> more picks and the important tools. You can tell I went back to teaching ESL in a couple, less, two weeks ago, I guess, because now I'm enunciating more clearly. <laughs> okay, so this is the tool that you need to tighten the head of the drum. I'm gonna just start tightening them. I'll fast forward because I don't want to bore you. This is how you learn. That did it. <gasps> wow. So we're gonna make it a little tighter. Maybe that's all it needed. All right, let's check it out again. I had to see what time I have to go back to work. Let's tune it. Might as well. Still in tune, wow. Wow. Still a little bit. Oh, I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Gone to Louisiana, my true love for to see. perfect for anyone to learn on or even someone who knows how to play and just wants to take it uh, on a hike because of your backpack straps on this nice gig bag you don't have to worry too much um, it's pretty padded I mean I wouldn't throw it off of anything but I think if it kind of fell over you might be okay um, really has a nice tone I'm amazed how well it's staying in tune Hey everybody, it's Maria. It's another day. I had to go back to work last night. And today when I was in work and I came home, I uh, changed my clothes because I was so hot. And I started thinking about this banjo and I said, you know, it's still that sitar sound on one of those strings just didn't sit right with me. So that's what I Googled. And sure enough, it's a common problem. And I had a 50-50 chance of getting the bridge the right way. And apparently it is supposed to be angled toward the tailpiece. I don't know if you could see that, but now it's angled toward the tailpiece, and look, no twang. None at all. So, I mean, I guess tightening the head was fine. Could be preference. So it doesn't look like I did anything wrong by doing those little adjustments, but what it turns out is an easy, simple fix is the angle of the bridge. So now I've learned something new. In banjos, the bridge should be angled back toward the tailpiece. Ah, live and learn. So now let's try a song. I don't think it really affected too much when it was um, 
<clears throat> the fretted notes, but it was the plucked ones. So let's try this song now. Thank you, Van Gogh. It's really a beauty. Take care, everybody.